Hello, Cave Dwellers. Welcome into the cave. It's been a while since we heard that music. That's the Retro Road Trip theme yeah. song. Joined today by Mark on our Retro Road Trip. And behind this slowly opening garage door is perhaps the most generous donation. And we've received some seriously generous donations yes. over the years. Yep. But it, it, this is top tier. And uh, we're going to reveal it to you today as we're going to make the special trip over to collect it all and we're gonna dig through it all. And it's all courtesy of a very generous man by the name of Ian, who you're going to get to meet later. But first things first, we need to get over there to collect it. So I jumped in my car. Now, Mark already lives over in the area where the collection is, which is roughly without doxing yourself, Mark. Uh, Finch Hampstead. Okay, yeah. that's where we're heading for. So about an hour, 20 minutes for me. Here we are on the drive. Just a straight run down the M4, really, before yeah. we get into the posh area where Mark lives. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and then we arrived at Ian's and that slowly opening garage door. And I think it's time to reveal what's behind it. A big old pile of boxes, which doesn't give much away, but there's plenty written on the boxes. And I, our first impressions were... Well... I was gobsmacked, yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing, um, I'd already visited. Oh, Mark, you'd already yeah. been, yeah. I'd yeah. already been there and I'd spoken to Ian previously and the pile had grown since then. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> I was double shocked as the... Uh, Garage door opened, but yeah, Vic 20. Um, Amiga 500 in a box there, Amiga 600, yeah. um, C16. There was a Sinclair QL, there was yep. all sorts. And you're gonna get a closer look at some of this in a moment, but this was just our experience of getting there. And um, well, let's, let's hear Ian say a few words because we had a chance to chat to him and he just told us a little bit about the background of it as well as his own personal history and why he came to have all of this in his garage. So let's just hear a few words from Ian now. We'd like to thank PCBWay.com for supporting our episode today. They aren't just about PCBs, but they do do a tremendous job of that. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection moulding. If you're creating, then PCBWay.com can help you bring your project to life. Get an instant quote now over at PCBWay.com and we thank them for their support. My name's Ian um, and this is my retro computer collection uh, that I really feel needs to be honed with people that can give it the love and the care that these old computers need. Growing up as a, a teenager in the 80s in the UK at the, the really the start of the, the home computer industry, um, what you saw was just the sheer variety of different um, home computers and they were marketed as such in Dixon's and WH Smith's and, and Boots and, and basically every retailer was jumping on the bandwagon to, to flog you uh, different, um, different computers. So back in 2012 I uh, started scouring eBay for those home computers that as a teenager I used to lust for. Computers that I'd either used um, as a child and as a teenager uh, and those others that I saw in Dixon's or that were priced way out of my league, eBay became um, a source um, to, to locate these old machines. One of the first purchases I made was uh, for a ZX81. We used to have a ZX81. My younger brother uh, had a ZX81 and then we donated it to the local school. I then um, saw on eBay uh, Commodore PET. Now Commodore PETs were what we had in our school computer science so um, that was one of the, probably the most expensive purchases from eBay that was about a hundred pounds. Yeah I, I think um, <laughs> they might not seem it. Uh, this, this, these boxes took about uh, six years to gather. The, the opportunity to um, then acquire and just get hands-on with some of those machines that are a little bit more of a, a British or unique to the UK. So um, things like an, an Auric One or uh, the Towton Einstein. I mean, these, these are machines that were just, um, say, in the UK, but more often than not out of, the, out of, um, out of my reach uh, at the time. So it was a good chance just to uh, experience and, and see them. The... Sinclair QL was quite a difficult um, one to get. There's the prices on those, even in the um, going back uh, sort of six or seven years, were r really uh, pushing my budget. Um, 
So especially uh, boxed versions of the Syncare QL. And what I, ironically, what I've, what I've found over the years is that you can get hold of the actual hardware, um, but finding some of the original peripherals in good condition, um, I was probably spending as much for um, uh, analog joysticks for a Dragon 32 than the actual Dragon 32 computer itself. Being able to donate uh, this, it, it really ensures that um, the legacy can continue and seeing how the cave is enabling the next generations to understand um, and experience, that's, that's really been my motivation. I've realized that um, no one individual can preserve and keep functioning this amount of kit. It needs people that are passionate about maintaining it and sharing it with others. What I really feel is inspiring about um, the cave is that it's actually accessible to others and not just the software and the computers, but the, the other media and the paraphernalia that, went, that, that goes about it. So I'd keep on tinkering. Uh, I will probably be using some of the emulators more uh, but just knowing that um, safely stashed away in the garage is the, that original uh, 48K that I had as a, as a young lad. Um, that's, that will allow me to get my fix. The days of going on eBay stopped back in 2017. Uh, I realized that from my perspective, uh, the quality and the prices of what you find out there, there was less, um, less, less gems to be found. Uh, and I think um, this is something that's seen globally. Um, the days of car boot sales, where you'd be able to just grab something, and, uh, I think are also long gone. Seeing all this packaged up in boxes, what I'm really looking forward to is seeing how uh, Mark and Neil transform it and, and get it back into life um, and accessible to people uh, for them to experience. It's doing no one any use in cardboard boxes. Neil, how um, difficult was it not to empty those boxes oh, out and just start going through It really everything. was, it really was. So we thought uh, better of it, that we should load up the car at this point. So yeah. loaded it up. I mean, I've got a pretty hefty estate Oof. and it looked like it might all go in there at one point, but not quite. No. But then we got as much as we could in there. And then uh, the, the final boxes went into Mark's van. Just remind me, why didn't we start with the van <laughs> and then put things in the car? We've done, we did things the wrong way around. Funny story there. You see, you'd spent so much time cleaning your car <laughs> that you didn't want to actually take the van. <laughs> I'll explain why I cleaned my car that morning. Okay, Ian was being incredibly generous by donating this kit. And um, my car cleaning was well overdue. It was looking like a right mess. I really needed to clean my car. And I thought, what's it gonna look like if I turn up and accept an incredibly generous donation from a man looking like I can't even look after my own car? <laughs> you know, he's gonna you think, you're not gonna be able to look yeah. after all this that I'm donating to you if you can't look after your car. So I, I had to clean the car. Is, is, is that sensible thinking? No, but... Yeah, well, I've got a clean car now. Anyway. We, we know you, Neil, and we appreciate you for all your little mental quirks. So, uh, so um, this was spread out over a period of two days, actually. We couldn't do the whole thing in one day. So loaded up the cars, securely parked them up. Yep. Um, had a quick visit to your house at this point. So yep. let's, let's just um, step in uh, the back door where the kitchen is. And you can get an idea of the work that's been on, done on Mark's house. And it really does look like a show home. You would not guess this not. was the same house that Mark showed. Burned to pieces, burned yeah. to a crisp a year ago. And apart from the brick walls, every single one of these walls and ceilings and floors were gone. Yeah. You could literally stand where we are now, look up, and you could see all the way to the inside of the roof, the rafters. So then as we come upstairs, we can see the only thing that's really waiting to be done is the carpet being laid. And then it is... Almost as good as new, really, isn't it? Yeah, the, I mean, car is... carpet's coming soon, and I'm going to have some nice room to start making videos again. Excellent. So there we go. A quick detour from our road trip. I had to pop over while I was there and have a cup of tea and see how things were coming along. Yeah. Um, I'm really pleased for you. I'm, Thank I'm you. You're, Thank you're you. back I'm, on your feet. I'm really pleased, and I'm also very grateful for all the support that everybody gave me. So thank you so much for everyone, you know, for your messages of support and your actual real financial support. Yeah. So thank yeah, you so much. Great. 
So um, we slept on it overnight, didn't we? We yep. securely parked our cars to make yep. sure that that didn't all disappear overnight. And then we made our way over to the cave this morning where we unloaded. Um, thankfully, uh, the stuff could be loaded onto a trolley. So we uh, got it all out of the car, put it in a trolley and um, use the opportunity to put the GoPro in the lift. Because yeah. <laughs> we're not allowed in the lift. There's a big sticker that says human beings are not allowed in the lift. That's right. It's only so, half height. Um, so um, that doesn't stop us wanting to go in the lift, but we're far too grown up for that. So we thought we'd, uh, we'd take a fantastic voyage through the lens of the GoPro. There we go. I hope it came out. It feels like even more than when we first went into that garage, when we laid it out here. There's just so much more stuff. In yeah. There. I mean, when you say that, it, it's actually, we saw it all there and I thought I knew what was there. And as I was laying it out, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And, oh yeah. And then we started to look in the boxes and it's, oh, okay. So it's not just the system that's labeled on the box. There's the manuals, there's cassette tapes, there's add-ons, modern and classic add-ons. Yep. There's so much in the there. The leaflets that came with the systems. So much. It's amazing. Um, so we were just bowled over all over again and we continue to be today. And there's no way we can show you absolutely everything in this donation. There's just too no, much to do in one video. Much. So we had a little wander around and we decided to pick out some choice things that we really wanted to show you. And um, well, let's talk you through them on the desk here. So we start yeah. with well, I, I picked out the Commodore Amiga, of course I did. And I actually said to Ian, when we arrived um, to one side, I said, he's gonna go for the Amiga first. <laughs> and Ian went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, he's gonna put that in the car first. I said, no, he's gonna put that in the car last <laughs> because he won't want it to get squashed. Yes. And guess what happened, what ladies happened. and gentlemen? That's what happened. That was what happened. So this is an Amiga 500 and I thought, okay, it's not 500 plus, so this is gonna be solid. This is gonna be working, no problems mm. here. So we, um, here it is in the box here. Just a bit of a clean, maybe a bit of a retro bright and it'll be looking as good as new. But you will immediately notice this fantastic thing on the side of the A500, mm -hmm. a GVP. So this is a hard drive add-on. Now there were versions with uh, an accelerator in there, but this, isn't, this doesn't appear to be one of them. So if it works, we can get an image of it, but ultimately we'll replace that with something like a SCSI to SD yeah, with definitely. an SD card. There's a space in the front for four SIMs. It will take up to eight megabytes. There's no space in here to add any additional accelerator, so that would have been a different baseboard in those models. Right. Okay. But there it is. So that's certainly something we want to get up and running. And then the 500 itself, I thought, as I said earlier, it's not 500 plus, this is going to be okay, but it's always worth checking in the trap door. And we found this memory card in there with a battery backed up clock. And of course it's leaked. It looks like a little bit of it has worked its way into the pins in the trap door connector. We'll have to open it up fully to see. Um, I've seen a lot worse. I've yeah. seen a lot worse. So what's this? Is the uh, one and a half meg? It's an interesting one. It looks like it's got some wires going into the Amiga, which probably hook into one of the custom chips. Because normally you'd put a half meg RAM expansion in that trapdoor. Yes. Job K. Yeah. But this seems to be one and a half. Looks like one and a half, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're all socketed as well. So even if it is dead, there's lots of lovely socketed RAM that we can take out there and use somewhere else. No, we can definitely save this board, Neil. So we'll look into this more. Mark says he can save it. We did snip the battery off just to avoid further Straight damage down. to it. And um, yeah, so we're off to a great start with this Amiga 500 and the GVP. And there will definitely be a GVP episode very soon. Uh, Mark, what's the first thing that you picked? I've gone for this Tatung Einstein, and anybody who recently watched my own channel will know that I've got a bit of a, a thing going for them at the moment. And um, yeah, and this one just looks lovely. I just love the look and the feel of them. It's a very utilitarian looking machine, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And they come in versions with one or two disk drives in the front. I think they all came with one, and mm. you can buy the add-on disk okay. drive and add it at a later date. Uh, this has got one drive, so it's really a perfect candidate for having the original physical drive installed at the same time as um, some kind of USB replacement. Yeah, yeah, so a floppy emulator in the second one, 3D printed frame, maybe yep. something like that to make it sit in there nicely. I remember them being about, but I don't remember anyone ever having one in my circle of friends. I think it's because they were ridiculously expensive. They retail for like 499 pounds back in the day. So they were really only within the reach of developers who would then code for other machines on them and then Put them straight to the machine. So really definitely going to be an interesting thing to look at. So nice choice there, the uh, Tatung or Tatung Einstein? Well, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to go Tatung because um, somebody said on one of my videos that that's the noise that you get when you start up Netflix. 
Tatung. <laughs> you go Tatung, I'll go Tatung, and then nobody can accuse us of being wrong in the comments. Right, my next choice was a Commodore 16. The, um, the little brother of the Commodore 64. And why did you pick this Commodore 16? Because, you know, to most collectors, it's kind of a common machine. What was the particular reason you picked this one out? Well, it is the machine once you get in there, but it was the case. Yeah. Look at this briefcase. It is the ultimate nerdy briefcase. It's brilliant. Imagine and, going to school with this. Uh, I've seen a couple of these cases, and they all seem to have this wonderful ability to completely self-destruct oh, into yeah. to fragile bits of razor-sharp plastic. So I'm really, really impressed with A, the condition of this case, and B, what an amazing job it's done of preserving this yeah. machine. So when we open this up, just look how new and fresh this Commodore 16 looks. It's just gorgeous, it's to it die is. for. When we turned it over, the rubber feet on the bottom, absolutely nowhere to them nowhere. whatsoever. In it, fact, I, it looks like someone's bought a Commodore 16 for someone for Christmas and they've gone, <laughs> this isn't a Commodore 64 and it's languished in the case. They could never work out how to open the case. They couldn't work That's out it. how to open the case. <laughs> and not only was the machine in there, there were some cassette tapes, Beautiful example of the uh, tape deck. Yeah. Which has got a little, it's got a little round connector on there. It almost looks like an S-video connector. It does, and again, the tape, this, the tape deck looks almost unused. Yeah. So. yeah, so a really beautiful example. And yeah, those cases, they normally fall apart and there's normally mm. just some like cardboard inside there, yeah. which then starts to disintegrate. Disintegrate. You really don't want that so. to happen with this one. Um, I need a cabinet big enough to display it. You need a case, case and all. Case. For the case. I need, I need a case for the case. There we go. Maybe we can shrink wrap it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is an incredible example of the C16. Mm. Um, and we'll just grab another one quickly, actually, because of the C16. That, that, there was a plus four in, in amongst the donations. There was a plus well. four. And it's funny, I'm not really much of a Commodore head, so I'm not really sure the relationship between these two. I know they sort of existed in parallel because you always used to see the games for the C16 stroke plus, plus four. four. Yeah. So I think they're pretty much the same machine, but I know that the plus four was kind of geared towards home business accounts. Right, okay. Hence You've these... got the separate cursor keys down yeah. in the corner there. But it's a lovely looking machine. And in a lot of ways, I prefer the look of the C16 to the actual C64. And from an exhibition point of view, it's lovely to have both to be able to display them side by side. And oh, definitely. And people would have had that machine. From the C16 and the Plus 4 then, we moved on to a lovely example of an MSX. Mm. This was a Toshiba HX10, yes. I believe, MSX. The first thing that we pulled out of the box were uh, some games. So there was this lovely cartridge version of mm. Bruce Lee. Now, I've played it on tape. I've played it on disc. And I thought disc was the pinnacle of Bruce Lee. Nice quick loading. Yep. Cartridge, I've got to get this up and running. It's a great game, Bruce Lee. It is. And then uh, Road Fighter was in there. That's a decent game as well. And also Konami's Ping Pong. Another decent game. Nicely boxed as well. Yeah. And then next out of the box came this joystick, which, uh, well, it's beautifully boxed. It, it mm. looks pretty new to me. Uh, the color scheme's nice, black and blue. Bit, bit of um, bit a throwback to, yeah, yeah. yeah the Konix uh, yeah. or the Konix Navigator, which I used to have, that was black and blue. Is it Konix or Konix? Uh, it, it, it's the same as Tatung and Tatung. Oh, <laughs> Tatung and Potato, I suppose, yeah. Um, I always said Konix myself. Konix, I said Konix, Konix as Speed well. King, Konix yeah. Navigator, yeah. Konix Multisystem, yeah. yeah. Let's dig deeper into the box and see what else we can find here. The machine itself buried down here is in its original box. The biggest issue with the HX10 is that the power supply inside that they put in for the UK get really, really hot. So um, that's something that we could look at maybe in the future. Write that down, another possible future video. On, I can't write, Neil. My channel or Mark's, we'll see. Yeah, I can't Or maybe write. both. So that's the MSX, another lovely example from this um, hall of donations that Ian so kindly given us. And um, what did you pick out next to show us then, Mark? There was um, a Sharp, wasn't there? Another, the Sharp, another Japanese machine. The Sharp MZ700, mm. which it's just so quirky. It's got this built-in tape deck. And then if you remove this panel, you can see that there's a place that an inbuilt printer can sit. And that, I, I just love things yeah. like this. It's yeah. almost part computer, part point of sale retail yeah. machine. Yeah. It's got that, that vibe. Looks um, like it's, um, it's geared towards doing some serious business on it. I think so. Having said that, though, included in the box is a little games pack. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little tape that's uh, got some games. 
Yeah, now there were three cassette tapes included in the box as well as the games pack. Mm. There was the Sharp MZ700 series Galaxians. So that's obviously a packing game there. Yeah, and it says actual screen display on the front, mm. which um, very yeah, blocky. That's selling it to you. Um, there's some text on the back here actually. Galaxians, a high speed machine code version of the popular arcade game. So um, I don't know if they've got the license to actually use that or they've just gone. Yeah. They've just done it anyway. They've just done who's going to anyway. stop them? It's the, it's the 80s. There was also a version of Frogger here, which I actually really like the artwork. Yeah, on. we both said that independently, yeah. didn't we? We both said that we really like the artwork. Again, using the, the name Frogger and yeah. referring to the arcade on the back. Uh, I'm sure that wasn't licensed, but yeah, I love the artwork. It looks like some kind of 70s folk album it cover. It does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, we're, and then UFO. We're, we're back to the, uh, Low the felt tip pens, aren't we, for UFO. Um, on the back here it says, described by Personal Computing Magazine as just about the most difficult game we've come across. Yeah. It'll probably become a classic of its kind. I hate it. <laughs> there you go, that's from <laughs> Personal Computing how, Magazine. How can we not play that now? <laughs> now it's wonderful to have these systems in such good condition mm. um, to work with. Some less so that we can repair and get up and working and looking like new again. But sometimes it's the little things that stimulate the nostalgia and the memories. And in amongst it all was this original WH Smith bag. For those who don't know, WH Smith is uh, what well, was and still is uh, a current high street retailer. Yes. And it was one of the big ones that we used to go to to buy our video games. So Pens, pencils, video games. And it's the very shop that I've based our recreated retro video game shop on here in the cave. Um, to the point where I've kind of recreated the logo with RMC instead of WHS for WH Smiths. What better game to find in there than this game, which is Metagalactic Llamas Battle at the Edge of Time. Oh, I couldn't guess who wrote that one. There's only one developer who could possibly have made a game like this. It is, of course, Llama Soft yes. and uh, Jeff Minter. Mr. Minter the Yak. Yeah, 1983. Um, I'd love to get Jeff here for a uh, for a guest speaker day one day. He might need to bring one of his woolly friends, though. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it says on the front, it's for the unexpanded VIC-20, so no additional Wonderful. memory required. And that lovely llama spitting off of a wall rebounding and it hitting a spider on its web. Which actually sounds completely hat stand, but it's probably quite representative of the game. <laughs> so those are just a few of the items that were included in this donation. As you can see across the map, there's still a huge amount more. Sure. Um, and uh, we've got to go through a lot of them just to make sure yeah. that there are no battery uh, batteries to sniff out leaking varters. No or the nasty rest of it. hidden things that are gonna, yeah. So that, that's our immediate concern. Then we'll find someone to somewhere to store them, and then we've got to find um, a way to put them to good use. So whether that be in the glass cabinets on display to tell a story, or out in the hands-on area for people to use, we will find a use for all of these to tell their stories. It's like we've been donated an entire museum in one hit. We could open a whole other wing it's just to display incredible. all of this. It's you amazing. Know, we almost need more benches just to display all these things because so many of them are parts of people's childhood yeah. when they come here and see them in the cave. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about how we'd never seen an MSX at someone's house or yeah. I, I only knew one person with a plus four. But to someone else coming to visit here, that would mm. just trigger all of the memories of their childhood. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, we don't want to miss the opportunity to do that. So um, Ian, through his generosity, has given us the opportunity to, to reach more people when they visit here and to allow them to wallow in their nostalgia or if they're not old enough to have remembered it first time around to learn the stories that these machines have to tell. It's also a reflection of the incredible generosity of the community that we're a part of, um, not just Ian, but beyond Ian, whether it's on Reddit, Twitter, the Facebook groups, you, yeah. the viewers on YouTube who take the time to comment. Um, I just have to say that I'm really proud to be a part of it. And this really is a reflection of how wonderful and nice people are and willing yeah. to share and, um, it's just a tremendously nice vibe, isn't it? Is. it? And yeah. how much people really believe in what we're doing and how we believe in what you're doing in the things that you share out there and this whole circle of retro loveliness that's being shared. I'm just proud to be a part of it and um, I want to say thank you to everyone. And um, I'm also proud of the way the community responded to Mark and his house fire, which we mentioned oh, thank earlier. You. And thanks for popping round and getting bored for three quarters of oh, an hour was I tell you my future plans and I pointed at things that weren't there trying to explain <laughs> what I was going to do and he <laughs> nodded along quite nicely which I thought was very patient but you will be streaming from there won't you yep I'm going to be doing a bit of streaming would you like to join me I would love to come over for a stream once you've bought some chairs maybe oh, I've got the chairs <laughs> oh you've got, got the, the chairs. chairs okay so we'll do some, some streaming of course 
youtube.com forward slash Mark Fixes Stuff to go and follow his channel. Thank you very much. If you're not really following this channel, give us a follow. Um, hit the bell and um, press like. I can see you giggling there. And, um, and uh, thank you for taking the time to watch. And once again, a huge thanks to Ian. And thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. <laughs>